I was listening to that uh, lyrics. And there are too many distractions and too many other things out there that has drawn our attention. And too many things that are going on even before us that we really can't concentrate on Christ. Other things have our attention. Other things have our attention. And I'll give you um, some study material now. We're going to go through the scriptures here. But I want you to keep this in your hand because we're going to be teaching from this for the next several weeks until we get this down, that we have a full understanding of what it is to when the church meets. Uh, yes. The proper. See it? And so that means there's, a, there's an improper. And there's a proper. Yeah. And uh, let me thank you, Miles, for this morning. And all of you. Thank God for you. Uh, and we've, we've learned to I trust these two gentlemen that we've been listening to for the last five or six years, watching the with the flip. And we believe that these men were inspirational in helping the the ones that needed help Amen. and who saw they needed help for the body sake. The reason I said this because we have to trust men that are truly, we think, that are men of God. Amen. Amen. Now, if we believe that these two gentlemen are the men of God that they proclaim to be, and the men of God that we we grow under that teaching, mm -hmm. and there's some information we got from them, so we have to trust them further. I do believe that God wants to carry us into a realm where we only, where Jesus is present, only Him. Mm -hmm. And we're not relying or trusting anything else. Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that the, the world stage has been set and all the players are in place mm -hmm. well, right mm -hmm. now. All right. Uh, for the great consummation of time. I believe it's coming. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this to those of you that are in your 20s and early, from 20 to 40 years old, you're going to experience a, a, a stressful situation in this nation in the next 15 to 20 years Amen. that you would not believe. Mm -hmm. the, the dancing of the game shows keep your attention away from really what's going on in the background. Mm -hmm. The news, the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. the movies, they're to keep you away from really what's happening back here. Oh, yeah. Because there's, there's only entertainment. Mm -hmm. Even the, the organized church that's under the influence of the satanic principle it is keeping you awake because it's actually entertaining you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they have these double wars, these other wars that have for gospel singles yeah. that yeah. have you thinking that uh, mm -hmm. um, this is what I must do to achieve this. Yeah. But yeah, that the Jesus is far off to the right or to the left, I don't know, mm -hmm. but you don't see him. Mm -hmm. And um, what we want to do uh, through the aid of the Holy Spirit, picking up what Elder Miles shared this morning, we have to get to a place where we meet with Jesus only. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If your heart is, is, is on meeting Christ only, when we when the body when the body meets, mm -hmm. when the church meets, mm -hmm. you don't want to meet around me, Elder mm -hmm. Myers, or mm -hmm. Earl, or any other teacher. You want to meet around 
around this person of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let me say this. Now, there are two meetings that you have. Mm -hmm. You have the church meeting, mm -hmm. and then you have ministry meeting, mm -hmm. where there is a particular sermon given for everybody. Mm -hmm. right. And this is a church meeting mm -hmm. where Christ meets with his people. Yes. Mm -hmm. The person of Christ in the, in the heart of every believer meets <coughs> in us. Now, they said a proper church meeting. It is a going to church. <coughs> We're going to take our time here because we want the Spirit to be able to make pay on fellow. You got you woke up for the sermon? Okay. But do I the the let him allow allow Christ to reveal those things that has hindered us from really meeting with him totally. And what I mean by that to meet with Christ is to meet with the body. Christ is the central figure here. So he should be the one we meet with. Even though all of us are here, he can use all of us and speak to all of us for edification, uh, exhortation, and, and comfort. Mm -hmm. Right? There are many more things while we meet here. Now, the church meeting, and we're not talking about the organized church, because the organized church has its own particular reason for meeting. But the church, the church of Christ is growing and building is for him to meet with us. Many times the organized church meets with for other reasons other than presenting Christ. He may be his name may be mentioned, but actually the meeting for is for another purpose. And all those and we can't say exactly what all those other purposes are. But if you're, if you're involved or seen, I have come out, you know, that diverse denominations meet for their particular reasons. For raising money, for sending someone off to this place or that place, or for missionary. And Jesus' name may be mentioned, but the ultimate reason for the for them meeting is not to be meet, to meet around Christ. You see what I'm saying? The church meeting. The church meeting. Every believer in the local assembly, when he comes here, we meet in Christ. Now, I like this word, church meeting. She has her own overhead, but uh, you have a copy. I want you to keep this copy because we're going to go through them at some time, at some length later on. Because I don't want to be the main speaker every morning. Elder Myers, I know he's his hardest. He didn't want to be the main speaker. He didn't want you coming in looking at me for a message. Mm -hmm. You ought to have a message yourself. Mm -hmm. You ought to have something that you acquired during the week that you can present to the body for edification, um, exhortation, and comfort. Mm -hmm. And even rebuke and correction mm -hmm. and reproving. Mm -hmm. That should be a part of the meeting also. But it has to be met under this, these circumstances, under these conditions, that the agape love is a reason to regulate Come all on, church yeah. meetings. Amen. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Not music, right. not the pastor, right. not the elder, not the deacon, Amen. not any member, but love should regulate everything that goes on when the church meets. Amen. Amen. And that means that everybody's on what? One accord. Amen. And so we treat each other as sisters and brothers. In the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the proper church, I like the word proper. Well, if there's a proper church meeting, there's an improper church meeting too. Absolutely. You see? So we want to see what the scriptures say to get us in the proper church meeting and the proper church attitude. See, many times when organized churches come together, everybody got an attitude. Everybody, from the pastor to the door, everybody got attitude. 
the choir uh, member, he has an attitude. And the church person, he comes, he got an attitude. And whenever the ushers, they got attitudes. Everybody got attitude. But what Christ wants to do is have us meet in the spirit. Therefore, it eliminates the what? Attitude. Amen. Amen. Everybody got their own little thing. They think that what should work. I believe this, Pastor. I believe no. What Christ wants to do is have a proper church meeting. And that church meeting is the is a meeting under the authority of Christ, which is the head of the church. Amen. So we meet under the head, right? right. Church, the proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, have been so many, let me state this. There have been so many improper church meetings. In my lifetime as a pastor, as a member of the of the universal church, yeah. when we met in organized church, it, oh man, everybody had a reason for meeting. Yes. Yeah. And if your if your reason for meeting wasn't the agenda that day, you probably didn't come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the truth. Because you came to hear the choir sing, yeah. or heard some particular personality sing, mm -hmm. or to for the biscuits and, and sausages, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> of it, it can be actually utterly uh, uh, crazy right. when people meet. Mm -hmm. Why are you meeting? What's your reason for you meeting? Mm -hmm. But that was, I'm thinking that was improper, mm -hmm. but but the Apostle Paul wants to show us what's the proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. Right? Help us see. Now since we don't know exactly all the, the dynamics of a proper church meeting, that's why we're going to do a study on it. You see? And we want to, we want to, we want the Holy Spirit to help us to see the improper, in, uh, improper things that we kind of hold on to. That's right. And we brought it over in recovery. Mm -hmm. But it's still laying around mm -hmm. and it's really not helping us to see Christ in the clear. Amen. Amen. It's Say what? Oh, oh it's lingering. Yeah, lingering, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lingering on. Like you, like uh, so many times things hang on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And don't want to let it go. So a few things we brought over ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we don't want it to hang on. Mm -hmm. And as, as we teach, and as the Holy Spirit helps us here, we're going to find out exactly what those things are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to eliminate my thing on that. You're going to see those things and you should bring it to, a, to the attention under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit what we should move, remove it so that we can have what? Proper church meeting. And we want proper church meeting, am I right? That, that's our goal. That's our heart. We want proper church meeting. We, we are the members of the body of Christ. We are put into the body of Christ by one spirit. We are made to drink of the one spirit. We are all members of one body. So the one body should be functioned under the head of that of the one who's the head of the body, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to meet, if Christ's body is going to meet, we should meet under him. And everything else should be scrutinized and uh, looked at. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it, it's consistent with, with meeting Christ. Mm -hmm. Under Christ. Mm -hmm. You see? Everything that sounds good is, is not good. Everything that smells good uh, mm -hmm. is not good. Mm -hmm. hey, folks. Everything that we tend to think that uh, it's churchy, it may not have anything to do with the church. Mm -hmm. It may be church stuff, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with Christ's church. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to figure out here this morning. How the Holy Spirit is going to help us Glory. to to determine the proper think of the, pro church. Think of the proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. If it means eliminating anything, or even me, we want to meet what? Proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. Proper church meeting. All right. Amen. Now, the, it's a six, it's a message six, six to four, <laughs> a proper church meeting. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 1, verse 2, the first in your, in your scripture. And I want somebody to read that for me, for us, not for me, for us. Chapter 1, right? Chapter 1, verse, uh, uh, verse, verse 2, 1 Corinthians.
church meeting. To the church, to the church of God which is in Corinthians, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, they call thanks. Ooh, to all those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in every place who he is there and out. Amen. Can you read? No, no, no. We're going to get our brother James to read footnote one on the proper church meeting. The church. Now, we've got to give a definition of the church. Paul gives us that here in the, in the, in the book of Corinth. The church is in Corinth. That's what the church is. And there, it wasn't a Baptist church. It was a, it was a church at Corinth. Right? It wasn't a Presbyterian church. It was, it was a church at what? Corinth. That's when the church was located there in Corinth. Uh, read the uh, uh, footnote. One, one. Yeah. Two, one. Two, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The church of God, not the church of Cephas, of Apollos, or of Paul, or of any practice or doctrine, but of God. In spite of all the division, sin, confusion, abuse, abusing of gifts, and heretical teaching in the church in Corinth. The apostles still called it the church of God because the divine and spiritual essence which makes the assembled believers the church of God was actually there. Such a spiritual address by the apostle was based on his spiritual view and looking upon the church in Christ. Such a simple address alone should have eliminated all the division of confusion in both practice and doctrine. Okay. Okay. So the church was established in Corinth. Mm -hmm. So every member of the of the church was in Corinth. Mm -hmm. At Corinth. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that should that should have eliminated any kind of division. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if there was a Baptist church there, it shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. It should have been a church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. If there was a Presbyterian church there, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. When it first started out, this is what it was. Amen. Amen. All the other stuff were added on yeah. over the centuries mm -hmm. because of our individual's preferences. Mm -hmm. right. you. So it eliminated Paul, Cephas, and, and uh, Apollos, who were great speakers, but at the same time, you had people who flocked to, who wanted them to be there, and be there, Apollos Church and the Church of Cephas and the, and the Church of, of uh, Paul. They wanted that. But if, if it's Christ's church, and that church didn't have a name, it was named after the city that it was found in. And that was the church, the church at Corinth. So if I, if I had a Baptist church over here, it was no longer part of the church at, at Corinth. Right? It was, a, it was a Baptist church. And the origin of the church came out of something that they didn't agree on in, in Corinth. So I'm going to start a Peter church here. I'm going to start a Apollos church over here. And then I'm going to start another church, the Great Cephas church. And so all you that black Cephas, you go over here. And all you like Paulus, you go over here. And if you guys like Paul, you, you stay here. And so, and actually, actually what happened was the church in Corinth was no more. Amen. It was individual churches that were set up in these individuals' names. So Paul tried to get that clear. Right. You can't have anything but Christ who you meet. Right. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. We meet around him. We don't meet around some minister mm -hmm. or some organization or some uh, denomination. We meet around the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he is here this morning. Mm -hmm. He's going to help us see clearly those things that, that should be eliminated where we can come together, we worship him and only him. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I want to see I don't know about you guys, but I want to see. I really do. I want to see. If there's something hindering us from seeing, the Holy Spirit would help us see what that is. We, over the years, we did remove, the, didn't remove, the Spirit removed the choir. But we never said, let's don't meet anymore. It just, it just happened. Uh, and the meetings, the deacons meeting, and the Past anniversary, all that just 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 got just moved on. I don't regret it, Amen. and I'm sure you don't. Amen. You, I'm sure you don't. Just to just to make some meetings was stressful. 
just to get to a meeting when you want to lay down, that was stressful. When you get to get to a meeting, you just left one the day before, now you're going to get to another meeting. It can become very stressful. Amen. And very uh, disheartening. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, you have to mm -hmm. go to another. I had to do how these meetings are. I'm just sick of these meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the flesh. Mm -hmm. And it has gotten tired. Mm -hmm. But the spirit never is wore out. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we don't put too much obligation on the flesh. Amen. Amen. To eliminate that, Christ has done that while we can totally depend on, on the spirit of Christ. Amen. 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 Now, uh, second, uh, the same chapter, not same chapter, same book, mm -hmm. the sixth chapter and verse 17. Now he, he's getting a picture of where the spirit is. <coughs> right? He's getting a picture of where the spirit is. Look at that. But he who is joined to the Lord is what? What spirit? Okay. All, all you guys are joined to the Lord. Everyone. You believe it? You believe it? You believe it? You believe it. All of us believe it. All of us are joined to the Lord by what? Not separate. Separate. I'm joined to the Lord by one spirit. But we're individuals. But God hates the individuality. He doesn't hate us being an individual who are joined to the Lord, but he hates individualism. How one has strayed away from others mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because when, when God comes together in the, the church, the church comes together in one spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's over all. Mm -hmm. Over every one of us, he is the spirit over all. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to say something to the church, mm -hmm. he had to say it how? In spirit. Mm -hmm. And all of us are spiritual creatures. Mm -hmm. We live in these fleshly bodies but all of us are what? Spiritual creatures. Mm -hmm. And so when God says something to us in the spirit, then we speak what God said, speak to us in the spirit, in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, can you see that? In the meeting. God has a word for, for Jay. He has a word for Rosalind. He has a word for Beverly. But it comes where? Out of the body. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily come from here. Or here, or here. Anyway, it comes out of the body when the body is meeting prop, proper church meeting. Because the spirit is alive, is well, is doing its particular job and speaking to each individual in the body. Amen. For nourishment, for building up, for comfort, for all that in the body. Christ does that in the spirit. And, and, and who is that? Who is drawn to the Lord is what? One spirit. That means there's a mingled spirit, his spirit and your spirit, we all mingle up together. Amen. And so we say, but your spirit and my spirit is not mingled. Mm -hmm. The spirit that's mingled is Christ's spirit. Mm -hmm. So when Christ speaks, you hear what Christ speaks to you, and you speak what Christ speaks to you to what? The body. Mm -hmm. That's meant. Can you see that? He's mm -hmm. the head. All of us, all these are, are my hand, the fingers. Mm -hmm. Here's a pointer. I want you to point. Thumb, I want you to pop up. All my fingers. This. You tell each finger what to do, mm -hmm. how to act, how to respond, how it can help build up what? The body. How it can comfort the body. How it can experience revelation to the body. Comes through the, the, the head. To each member of the body. Now, if Jay was tied to me, then I had to do what Jay said. But I don't have to do what Jay said because we do what the head says. And Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. What we want to do is help us to realize that certain things in the church meeting hinder us from really experiencing total freedom and liberty in Christ. Amen. Each of us have a responsibility of allowing Christ to speak to us. Now, Ephesians, no, 1432 mm -hmm. of uh, 
Now the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Amen? Look at the, the footnote. 1432. <coughs> Jay, can you read that? 32 1. This means that the prophets are not under the control of their spirits, but their spirits are under their direction. Thus, this can be determined when to prophesy and when to see prophet when to cease prophesying. To maintain good order in the church meeting. Their spirits are not their master, but their means to function. They should learn how to exercise and use their spirits at their discretion. Amen. That means that when Christ gives you something to say, uh, you say that and that alone. That's exactly what it means. And the prophets are those who speak. And it doesn't mean that it's a prophet like in the Old Testament. You, you have Christ in you, and you have to speak for God and foretell. There are three types of prophesying. <coughs> Telling, speaking for God from the scriptures, foretelling what God already has said, and foretell that which God has given you to say. Now, this is going to take some time for us to get to this point. But God has given each of us the ability to speak for him. All right? How can we hear from the whole body if, if I'm just speaking every morning, Jada's speaking every morning, or Earl's speaking every morning, or just one person speaking every morning? We don't hear anything from the body. It's just these two or three people have been gifted to speak, and we come to you and say, and you wonder what, wonder what God gonna say today. And God may not say anything to you from me. He's already said what He wants to say to you, and He wants you to say it to the what? To the body. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the, and, the, and the elders are there to keep everything in order. So you watch for your soul. Mm -hmm. If you get blabbing off too long and run off in the hurry, got no business. <laughs> the the prophet should know when to tell the prophet, "Hey, you, you've gone too far." <laughs> When you spend too much time on you, uh, we realize that you're talking about you, and you're not talking about Jesus. When, we, when you're talking about something else out here, you're talking about a, a, a game, a football game. You can use some of that as an illustration, but when you stay there and you, you get the, and you get hyping on it, say, "Well, we will call you back." Say, "Come on back over here, stay with Jesus." You see what I'm saying? In the church, Christ only speaks. The Spirit only speaks of Christ. Amen. Right? We can say that. The Spirit is not going to tell you about football. He may use football as an illustration, but don't stay. You, you don't stay there. You come back and speak about Christ. If you can't speak anything further, right, you stop talking. Because everything else is what? Flesh. That makes sense? Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Ephesians 5, 18. Is this helping us speak to three things? Yes. yes. Happy you, Lisa? Yes. I asked Lisa, she said she's on my critical person. She, she's on top of her. <laughs> 5, 18. <laughs> Dissolution, 
hands, <laughs> but be filled in the spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in, in psalms with your heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Church meeting, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a proper church meeting, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. This is. Now, this is how he met in the first century for the enemy brought his organ and guitar and drums in. That's not saying there's anything wrong with drums and guitar, but that can't be our focus. That's all I'm saying. Guitars are great in their place, but when church meets, this kind of says that you eliminate that in the sense of it doing anything to stimulate us or to, or, to, or to magnify the flesh or to, or to, or to get the flesh all pumped up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm going to get you pumped up now. Or the preacher comes, he's going to finish you pumped up and you're going to feel good after you leave here. But you haven't learned a thing. No transformation. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. So read the footnote on the on that topic. 18.1. To be drunk with wine is to be filled in the body, mm. or as to be filled in the spirit, our regenerated spirit, not God's spirit, is to be filled with Christ. Amen. One, two, three. And to the fullness of God, 319, to be drunk with wine is our physical, in our physical body causes us to become dissolute. But to be filled in our spirit with Christ with the fullness of God causes us to overflow with Christ and speaking, singing, Woo! song, and giving thanks to God. Verses 19 to 20. And also causes us to subject ourselves mm -hmm. to one another. When you feel with the Spirit, see, you're not filled with, with alcohol. Because mm -hmm. they, they, they came together in Christ, I think it's the 11th chapter, mm -hmm. and they were drinking and all that when they came together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were filled with drink. Mm -hmm. And when they spoke, mm -hmm. when they said something got out, it was all uh, delusion. Mm -hmm. Because drinking never gives you a clear picture. And when you try to speak, when you're drunk, you're just you're not very you're not very good at that. You can't speak because the tongue has this has has something on it and the mouth and the eyes and the legs and, and you're drunk. But he says now, when you come to the meat, you have to come absent of drinking. I, I, I can't say this, but I really don't think anybody in here drinks. Mm -hmm. You may drink, but you don't drink to the excess. Mm -hmm. But what you want to do, you want to stop drinking mm -hmm. altogether and drink more of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you're drinking a, at, at the wine overflowed, and you, you became uh, uh, ignorant, and, and, and so people can't stand you because you're drunk here oh, over wine. Mm -hmm. You're saying things out of your mouth, and you're accusing people, that, and you're drunk, you smell, you smell, you smell of alcohol, your, your clothing, your breath, everything about you smells like alcohol. So you know if you say something, it's not of the spirit, it's of the flesh. So when you're drunk in of Christ in the spirit, the spirit fills you up. So when you're overflowing with Christ, there's going to be a speaking of Christ overflowing. And that speaking breaks comfort, edification, and, uh, and uh, exhortation. Am I right? That comfort. <clears throat> When you when, when I just drink, <clears throat> I wasn't a real talkative person in the first place. Uh, but when I drink, it was put me in another zone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, man? It put you in another yeah. zone. Yeah. And it actually took you out of your your, your character yeah. and you became something else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And sometimes you drink because you want to become that other person Amen. that could do and say the thing that you would not say Amen. if you were like this. Amen. 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 You would lie a little better, mm -hmm. or you thought you were lying a little better, <laughs> but actually, and you would say things you wouldn't normally say because of this drink. Yeah. It was deep in you, but it wouldn't come out until you, so you took a drink, drink. or yeah. later on if I graduated from drinking to, to smoking reefer, 
I, 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 I took me into two realms. The realm of the flesh and the realm of the, of the reaver. And so really, when, I, when you left this person here, you became something totally different. And this is the same transformation that Paul is talking about. Don't be drunk off of anything else but Christ. Yeah. When you're drunk off of Christ, then that comes out. That overflows. Yeah. When you're drunk off of liquor, your flesh overflows. And you got yourself in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Because of your, your mouth. Mm -hmm. And what was in you? What was overflowing in you? And that's what he's talking about. So I'm thinking that if you haven't drank, that, that's, that's what happens when you drink. Many of you have never drank. Never smoked. Never chewed. Never smoked in the reefer, so I'm talking to completely people that well, I mean, they understand about, about all of that. You're a liar. You're lying and you know about it. Yes. My dad used to drink, I used to call it liquid courage. He would say everything he wanted to say when he was sober, when he got drink that absolutely. liquid courage, boy, that absolutely. mouth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> liquid courage. <laughs> and also, it worked yes. another way, too. Yeah. If, if you were real aggressive, the liquor will get you down to a point where you, you want nothing. Yeah, yeah. Because you are aggressive. And so, I'm, I'm saying that in the sense of that's your nature. That's your nature. Mm -hmm. and, but when you drink, in order to leave this, this monster up here, you drink and, and, and so I'm like, I'm alright now. I'm good. I'm good. But you're not good because you're drunk off of something of the world instead of drunk off of Christ. That's, that's what Paul is to, to believe you. Amen. You, you, you gotta be filled with Christ. Amen. And when you're filled with Christ, mm -hmm. He fills you constantly and you overflow. Yeah, you overflow. Yeah. When you when you're in the meeting, you just overflow with Christ. Amen. And you have to have that, that feeling all week long. Yeah. All week yeah. long. So when you get to the yeah, mission, right. you just overflow it. Yeah. You, you call all on week. Jesus all that week. Right. You experience him all that week. You just love them all that week. And you're not just that's ready to get a church meeting and say, Lord, now, brother, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amen. And Amen. even in the in that meeting, there are gonna be times that you share things that well, you rebuke him, mm -hmm. but you don't know who you're rebuking. Mm -hmm. You're not rebuking me, you're not rebuking, him. you just sharing what God has put into overflow. Amen. And if it's in love, you can receive it. Amen. 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 Because Paul said this a rebuke mm -hmm. with all long suffering. Mm -hmm. Reprove. Mm -hmm. You know, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. So if you if you feel with Christ, if that rebuking, the rebuking isn't about this fellow, so, it's about what he has done in you. Mm -hmm. And also what he is doing in others. You don't know who the others are. Amen. 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 But you're in the spirit, so though with everybody joined to the Lord in one spirit, you're receiving exactly what the spirit is ministering to you uh, in that session. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks. Right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, 20. Mm -hmm. 19. We read 18. Mm -hmm. Read 19. Uh, Earl, please. 19. 1 and 19. 2. Oh, you don't have your mind. Uh, go ahead. Speaking 19 through 21. Mm -hmm. Modify the feeling of spirit in verse 18. Mm -hmm. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs are not only for singing okay, and psalming, but also for speaking to one another. Mm -hmm. Such speaking, singing, psalming, giving a thanks to God, verse 20, subjecting ourselves to one another, ah. verse 21. Are not only the outflow of being filled with the Spirit, but also the way to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. 19 2. Yes. Psalms are long poems, mm -hmm. hymns are shorter poems. Mm -hmm. And spiritual <clears throat> songs are poems that are shorter still. All that are needed in order for us to be filled with the Lord and to overflow with Him in our Christian life. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. the, um, in the early church, mm -hmm. Where do you think they got the Psalms from? Out of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And but he's saying here, in this in this setting, they didn't bring that old Psalms. Mm -hmm. You know what? They didn't have any life of it. See the New Testament, Old Testament. There was no life in the Old Testament. There was 
is that it's only life in the New Testament, in the sense of its believers. The Old Testament had Psalms, but there was no birth. There was no birth. There was no religion of the Spirit. There was no one Spirit, because everybody did that which was right in their own eye. All right? Now, there were men that loved God, Amen. and they cherished and worshiped God, and they wrote these Psalms. But these Psalms, these Psalms are actually absent of life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit didn't, didn't actually have anything to do with that song. Mm -hmm. Only since that was pinned down by men, holy men spake that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But in, in the life, the life that I live now in the flesh is the life of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You will never find that anywhere in the Old Testament. That life was in the believer, in those people in the Old Testament. They live by faith. But we live by faith, and we have the operation of faith in us mm -hmm. in the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, so the psalms that they sang were psalms that came out of the scripture mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That's where they came from. Old Testament psalm came out of the experience of the Israelites and their experience and their walk in, under that, in that dispensation. Mm -hmm. Now those in the New, new Dispensation have a psalm to sing too. But that song has come out of the heart of those who have been redeemed Amen. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That has life in that song. Um, I was listening to um, when the lady, he said there was a song that Watchman E had, Watchman e had, Watchman e had written down. It came out of verses John, the uh, Galatians 2.20. Mm -hmm. You heard that? Mm -hmm. Galatians 2.20. And many of, of the early believers were so Filled with God's Spirit, that they could go to the, the to the books here and actually write a song from a book or from a passage in the Scripture in a book. Cause God was the one that the leading and the, and, 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 and 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 initiating that song, not them. Amen. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. right, we'll get it some a little closer. But the Old Testament is the Old Testament. The New Testament, is the Old Testament. One is the dispensation of law. Uh, other one's a dispensation of what? Grace. We live where? Grace. Under grace. grace. We don't live under law anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was, and that was, thank God, and that was removed by Christ. Because we can't, we can't serve law and God at the same time. So Christ did that initial work himself, remove the law, so we could serve him in spirit and in truth. And not be worried about the consequences of the law. Because we'd already died to the law. Jesus already died to the sin. And uh, became a living <laughs> sacrifice for us. <clears throat> we are no longer obligated to keep the law. And things pertain to the law. Because we are new creatures. We're not old creatures. We're new creatures. The old creation served in the old creation. But we can't, if we are new creatures, we can't bring anything over from the old creation. Amen. Glory. Amen. So everything we, we do in the, in, or everything occurs in the new creation comes out of the direct Revelation of Jesus Christ. If Jesus revealed it to you, it's of the old creation. If he reveals it to us, it's a new creation and has to do with, 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 with loving and expressing Christ. Amen. Jesus, I, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will lead you and guide you where? Into all truth. He will take that which is mine and make it real unto you. He won't speak of himself, but he'll speak that which is mine. He'll show it to you. And so what he want to do is make sure that we're overflowing with Christ. Amen. If anything else out there that is hindering Christ Amen. from ex experience of Christ and seeing Christ and getting revelation from Christ and getting comfort and consolation from Christ, we need to allow him to see it, to, to show it to us, and then we gladly remove it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you can't remove anything if you don't, you don't see what it is. That's true. Right? Amen. All right, say for this. What we think we'll do to blah blah blah. We did the spiritual thing. I, I think we ought to move that. No. Like uh, at the fellowship years ago. They won't move the we want to move the uh, I think the pulpit. Because uh, you and Peg was I think you did. I think yeah, y'all were getting married. Mm -hmm. And Reverend what's that? Scar Scarver? Mm -hmm. that Scarver? Jimmy. One yeah, Yabber. Yeah, Yabber, not Scarber, Yabber. Mm -hmm. Go marry you guys. And we had all the toughest time we're removing that um, 
that pulpit and moving at them. Communion. That communion table. Yeah. Uh, certain around there that's raised the pure devil about that. Mm -hmm. I, I said, well, it, it's not hurting anything here. It can't destroy anything. Or it's just a table and a pulpit. When you finish moving it, it's just move it back mm -hmm. and put it right back where it was as if nothing changed. Right. But there was a different view on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because we moved it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I don't think anybody saw that. <laughs> but there was a few that saw something wrong mm -hmm. with it. See, in the spirit, you don't, you don't allow stuff of the materialistic world to hinder you from, from moving on in Christ. Amen. And I think that was one of the biggest things that we, we, we I, well, several more, but one of the things that really God created within the, those of us who were seeing little glimpses of things that were actually hindering us from growth. We don't know what all those things were, but God knows what they were, Amen. and that's why we are, we are where we are now. It's because of God. Amen. Yep. I was telling Charlie Duck, uh, what was last night, that um, we've been here a long time. Said, for so many years, we didn't know God was watching out for us. Mm -hmm. We really didn't care. Mm -hmm. We just doing our thing. But God was watching us. Yeah. Amen. Even in our devilish and all that yeah. stuff, he was watching us. Yeah. Amen. Now, you're going to be all right down the road here. I mean, mm -hmm. Let me keep an eye on you that you don't get killed and kill each other. Oh, yeah. I'm a, when you get down here, we're going we to really show you what's And when I look back, I can see what, hey, God was with us. Amen. Yes. Even when we didn't even know he was with us, yes. he was with us. Amen. Yes. And even when we got him, he was still with us, but we didn't fully appreciate that until now Amen. before we see him in all this glory. Amen. Amen. Don't give up. Glory. I don't care where you are glory. in this journey. Don't give up. Amen. 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 I believe in why God kept us around. We're still here. Amen. <laughs> to be a testimony. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. That's right. Amen. Now I believe that you live a life that's, 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 that's the beneficial to Christ, a beneficial for his eternal purpose, he will keep you around. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. What good is God going to keep you around if you are constantly uh, are against God? Yeah. And don't even know you're against him. Mm -hmm. And he gives you a chance for revelation that you see that, hey, you might be kicking a pricks here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might be, you might be disturbing my process here. Well, I, I warn you now. If you don't, I may have to take you. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Mercy. Because there is a sin under that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. John said, well, I went, can't tell you what that sin is. I don't know myself, but there is a sin under that. Mm -hmm. Believers can sin so much and create such a uh, adversity between them and God that He will take them. Yeah. Mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take them. Or by Ananias and Sophia. He took them. So God's still in that taking business. Now these were mentioned here in the scripture. But I'm sure there are many more, a thousand more that God took. And they're not mentioned in the scripture. But he did get an example of those in the scripture who said they loved God. But at the same time, they were doing things contrary to his, his, his eternal purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ministry. The book of um, Lord's Supper. you're sleeping. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're not acting. You're not, you're not, you're not conforming to, mm -hmm. to what God... And God gives you plenty of chance to do conforming. He will work with you. Mm -hmm. But I think that when God sees... Now, this is my thing. God sees there's no more He can do with you um, and actually causes some problems in His eternal purpose here. Um, <coughs> he, he may take you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, but from what Scripture teaches you, he may take it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we want to be filled with the Spirit, yes. and we meet on a pro in a proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. Proper. Mm -hmm. Music playing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the entourage come out first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pastor with the robe on, carrying the Bible in my hands. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes he comes out first, mm -hmm. and then the entourage comes out. And you better have enough seats up there because if not, uh, you may hear it from you. Mm -hmm. You should have seats up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who, who, who's, who's the problem here? The pastor. Mm -hmm. And his entourage. Mm -hmm. who, who's obstructing the view of Christ? Mm -hmm. The pastor. And his mm -hmm. entourage. Oh, that's who you're yeah. looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's who you said. Cut the spirit off all the other. Oh, right. mm -hmm. Wonder what he gonna say today. Mm -hmm. If you wonder what he gonna say, well, you're not listening to Jesus. Mm -hmm.
would you need to listen to Jesus all week? Yeah. That's the key. So you come in here to have proper church meeting. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus can speak to the body. Yeah. Amen. 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 Don't tell me what would you did last week. Unless Christ is working something in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't linger on yourself too long. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, that's flesh. Mm -hmm. And flesh has no play in God's eternal purpose as far as building the church. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Building. We are God's buildings. We are. Mm -hmm. And we are God's little, little law. We call them the lively stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These buildings, right. this, this temple, mm -hmm. this holy temple where he inhabits mm -hmm. in spirit, mm -hmm. in the believer. So the believer comes in, he has all <coughs> this wonderful stuff that God has done for him in the week. Mm -hmm. And he's just overflowing. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia, I just can't wait. Martha, I just can't wait. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I just can't wait till I get there and, 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 and tell my brothers and brothers in the spirit mm -hmm. those things that God has accomplished in my life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory. But if, you, if you've been running your life all week, you ain't got much to say when you get here. Mm -hmm. But you, mm -hmm. am I right? Mm -hmm. If you've been making all this sins that week, if you've been disobedient in the spirit, if you ain't heard nothing in the spirit, and you and, and, and you listed all, all kind of rock and roll and music and news and, and other erroneous preaching. When you get in here, that's the only thing in you. Right? But if you've been listening to Christ, reading the scriptures, obeying Christ, walking in the spirit, uh, uh, living in the spirit. When you get here, you have a, a, a whole lot to overflow to the body. Thank in the body. Every you. You. member. Now every member doesn't have to bring anything each Sunday. But Paul said, when you come, you ought to have something. Mm -hmm. Glory. It shouldn't be just me. It shouldn't be just Elder Miles. It shouldn't be just Jane. Every one of us should have something to offer to the body as far as comfort, as far as exhortation, as far as uh, 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 edification. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. To have something. The body actually strengthens the body. Amen. As a weak member, the body, my hand, my, when I, I, I see the thing, playing basketball years ago, I ball hit it and bit that ball like that. You know what I did? I pulled it out a little bit there and put a popsicle stick on it and kept right on playing. But it never straightened out. But what I'm saying is, when something other, other members of the body are hurting, and you know sometimes you don't have to know that members hurt. But the spirit knows that. The spirit knows it. And that's why the sensitivity of the spirit is not working in a lot of believers because of the fact that if they come to me and they come hoping that I'll say something, that our Jay will say something to meet that need. But God doesn't give it all to me. But he's giving it to the body. Thank you. If Beverly has something to say. I don't know what it is, but he has something to say. Mm -hmm. Diane, all of us have something to say mm -hmm. of the Spirit mm -hmm. because I experienced Christ during the week. Mm -hmm. I experienced him this morning. Mm -hmm. I experienced him last night. Mm -hmm. I experienced him when I talked to my wife. Somewhere in our daily life, living in the Spirit, you can you got something that God has overflowed in you that you should share with the, with the, with the, with the, with the church, mm -hmm. with the body, with the need. Have a proper church meeting is there for edification, exhortation, and uh, comfort, right? Mm -hmm. So the preacher can't give it all. Mm -hmm. The teacher can't give it all. Thank you. There are times for the preacher, there are times for the teacher. But the overall body, when it meets, there's, I need to hear from what God has done in your life mm -hmm. and, what, and what, why are you praising God? Why are you singing hymns to God? Why are you, are, are you praising God, giving Him glory, magnifying that? Why are you doing that? Amen. Are you doing that because it calls for in the setting? Or is it doing it because there's something overflowing in you? That, that's what I think that's what Paul means. Overflowing. If it's overflowing, then it's, 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 if it's overflowing in you in the spirit, then it's beneficial to the body. I'm thirsty. I'm not talking about that. I'm thirsty. But there's a sister or a brother here that is refreshing who gives me 
a drink. Yeah. 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 Build me up. Yeah. Come on, honey. I need to hear what I need. Right. I can't hardly make it this morning. Yeah. And that preacher, he did a pretty good job, but he ain't hit, he ain't hit that spot. Yeah. But there's a sister who has an exhorting spirit mm -hmm. that God has done something in her to help her to move on. And she shares that with the body, so therefore I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. I've been fed. Right. I've been covered. I've been, I've been strengthened because of, of the fact that the body, a member of the body, of Christ's body, did strengthen me. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, where are we? Oh, verse, is it 20? Verse 19. 19, 2. Go ahead, Earl J. Psalms are long poems, hymns are shorter poems, and spiritual songs are poems yeah. that are not shorter. Still. All that he loves us to be filled with the Lord and to overflow with him in our Christian life. Right. How about uh, verse 20? I think it's not, it's not on here, but I think it'll be good to read it. We should give thanks to God the Father not only in good times, but at all times. Yes. 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 Not yes. only for good things, but for all things. Yes. Even in bad times, we should give thanks yes. to God our Father yes. for the bad things. Yes. The morality of the name of the Lord Woo! is his person. To be in the Lord's name is to be in his person in himself. This implies that we should be one with the Lord and giving thanks to God. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the whole principle of the thing is that God is in us. And we should be overflowing with God. And those sayings we say, the songs we sing, we bring substance to the members of the body. Right? Uh, how can plants supply <coughs> substance to the body that needs it? How can it supply encouragement to the body, exhortation, edification? How does this, is a, how does this apply the body with that? From the body. From members of the body. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Um, we, uh, the boy over at the uh, gym, has he busted his... Uh, bicep muscle mm -hmm. toward the ligaments. So he had to have it in strength and wrapped up and operated, put it back together. But he, he's walking around now with this arm like this. Mm -hmm. So what that does? It put more compelling on this arm. Mm -hmm. The arm here become more useful. Mm -hmm. and, it, it, and now I see where this arm is bigger than this arm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this arm is not working. This arm is working. You see what I'm saying? Is that what I'm saying? In order to grow, we need each member of the body to not be in a cast yes, or to be bogged up and be tied up with something, yes, but free and loose where it can be supportive to other, other members of the body. Amen. I can't get strength on my own. I guess I get something for Christ individually, but I need the body to fully build me up. To fully strengthen me, to fully support me, to put each the body support each other. Yes. Okay, here's a house. Egg. How about an egg? Egg is good. When you build something like an egg, you start on the bottom, and you it builds it like this. Each block supports the other block. Right. Each block in supporting takes the stress off of other blocks. Mm -hmm. So everybody is in the thing of building. So if I'm building properly, allowing Christ to work through me, I'm supporting others and others supporting me. No building can stand by itself in support all by itself. Amen. They have to have other members of the body supporting it. Amen. That makes sense? Yeah. Now, let's, let's move on to this. See if we can clear this up. And then that's where we get into some reading. Uh, Colossians 2 2.10 I mean Corinthians 2.10 I'm sorry Corinthians 2.10 Charge to my old age old age is not my heart <laughs> 2 what? I, I need to see what Christ sees. We want to see what Christ sees. This is the body. Right? He's talking about the body in, uh, 
in uh, Corinth. Mm -hmm. But also he speaks to the body here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. See, the word is for all believers. Not just for the believers who lived a long time ago and, right. no. and perhaps will be in the future, but he's talking about those right now. Yeah. Right now. The word is for right now. Right now. Or I said, well, he spoke to the rest of us, but that was back there. No, no, no. He's speaking to you right now. Right? Look at what he says. But to but whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. Also that I have forgiven, if I have forgiven forgiven anything, it is for your sake and for the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. Read the footnote there. Can you see it, Beverly? Yes, sir. Um, okay, um, 10 one. Okay, dear. Or tasting the character. Mm -hmm. Or deal graciously with. Gracious. Or great graciously with. Or deal graciously with. Let the face as in 4-6 Hold on right there. Now, do you know what the index of the eye is? <coughs> we just get it. We look. See, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So if a person looks at you, that's in the spirit, there should be something from your look that tells you something about that person. And not only that, but Christ wants to look at you through another believer's eyes in the spirit. I want to look at you for no other reason than to see what Christ sees. And what he sees, he's not determined to show me everything he sees. He's never determined to show that you, there is something needed here to, to build or lift this, this person. The index of Christ's eyes. You don't know how a person really is until you look up in the eye. Because the eye guides over every part of you. It can see the adultery, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing, robbing, whatever it is that goes on in your heart, in your deep in your heart, your eyes are going to reveal to you later on. Right? For in the heart lies what? Wickedness, adultery, fornication, that comes out of the heart. How do you know what's in the heart? Many times you look in a person's eye, you can see it. When I used to run the streets years ago, you can look at people and tell what they were thinking. Or normally what they were thinking. Right? You, you're a hunter. That's what you are. You're a hunter. Years ago, I used to be a hunter. I was a predator. I'm telling you, God loves you. That's what I was. I was a predator. And so I looked. If I saw you by yourself, you were in trouble. That's the way the devil does. He wants to keep you by yourself. He don't want you to come with Jesus. He wants to keep you apart from Jesus. He wants you to keep you apart from the power of God. You see? How did he get Eve? He caught her by herself. And then her husband came up and she, he did it. Mm -hmm. That's why you got a covering, you just stay under the covering. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a husband, you got someone greater than your husband, you got That's Jesus Christ. Jesus. Stay Jesus. under your covering. Yes. That's why the de denomination is so twisted up. Mm -hmm. They are under the pastor or under some organization or some theology or some, some teaching, philosophy, and they're not under Christ. Amen. Therefore, they're vulnerable to anything that comes out of the world system. That's what's going on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When you were out there, I don't know what you were, but you have a single eye for something. Mm -hmm. Jay, every one of us, mm -hmm. right, had an eye for something. Yep. Yes. And that eye was the index of what you were trying to get and trying to see. So that should be the same thing for I am in Christ. I want to see what Christ sees. I have no other reason. Last week we talked about agape. That agape love keeps you focused. That agape love keeps you regulated that you don't, don't, go, don't go astray. Amen. Right? Does that make sense, babe? Yeah. Uh, 
Read uh, footnote 310. Um, you got your little girl? You backwards? All right. Rob got you. Okay. Rob, you read it for us. Footnote um, three, uh, 10, 3. Chapter 2, <coughs> the scriptures, and verse 10, but footnote 310. 10, 3. Start reading a little bit of it. You have to read a little bit of it. No, we're not, we're not there. You're on 10-3. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, uh, honey. According to the index of this whole person, it's precious of his eyes, in his eyes. The first section of one, 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 and two is that is a long and in the to this epistle, which it follows the apostle first and the epistles to the disorder of the Amen. Now, the eye. The eye is the index. You want to see what Christ sees. Mm -hmm. So, the Corinth and believers was out of order. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're in the process of being a part of that, you can't see. What Christ does, he wants to get you in the index of his eye so you can see all of that which causes disorder and not be a part of it. If you don't have an index, if you're siding with anybody, if you're going along with anybody, no matter who it is, the pastor, anybody, if you're going along with them because you like them, because they're your neighbor, because you're a son or daughter or husband or something, and you, you're not properly indexed. You, you don't probably have your eyes indexed on Christ, what Christ wants you to see. You see? And if love is, is, the, is the regulated and orchestrated of this, then you'll see properly mm -hmm. that which is Christ and that which is not Christ. But if you're not, you don't have your, eye, eye, your eyes on what Christ sees or what Christ wants you to see, you can be out of order. And that's was one of the things here. There was grudging, there was strife, there was uh, other things going on in, in the body at Corinth because of the fact that they didn't see. And they, they all they saw was Paul, uh, Apollos, uh, Peter, and even Jesus. They didn't, they didn't see the what Christ sees. Christ is divided. There is one person, and that is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? You come in one morning and you, you go sit with that crowd that uh, likes what you like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, let me get on with Beverly. I know what Beverly is. Mm -hmm. I know what you're about. Mm -hmm. I want to sit with Murray. Yeah. Sit with Murray. I know Murray. Yeah. 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 We, we like the same yeah. thing. We don't like that preacher. We yeah. like the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that choir. So you, you got your little yeah. group. Yeah, the proof. But when, you, when your eye has an index of people want to see only what Christ wants to see, your blinders are on. And Christ's love regulates that so where you can be a benefit to the body of Christ and not a, not a, not a, not a liability. Amen. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't have favorites in the body. Amen. You just love everybody. <laughs> Therefore, it eliminates favorites. Amen. If you love me and love Peggy, love Jay, and love James, and love Rain, and love Jordan, yeah. then where, where, is the, where is the separation? Amen. There's no separation. Amen. 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 See, love regulates all of that. Amen. I copy. Love. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. 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 Him in 
Amen. in the church life. church life, thus fulfilling God's intention in, in Christ for the church. Go ahead. 26.1, mm -hmm. this is the result of the walk by the Spirit in verse 25, vain glory, mm -hmm. provoking, 
the envy of all of the flesh. Amen. Very glory give rise to provoking the envy. Amen. If we live by the Spirit, slave vain glory, provoking and envying will be terminated, automatically resulting in peace. Thus, three, three matters test in a very practical way whether we are walking by the Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now let's say we put a little cap on that. Living by the Spirit, that means that this is my life. That's right. Mm -hmm. But also I have to walk by the Spirit. It don't mean I'm following anything. I'm walking by the Spirit. My walk is by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm feeding on Christ in the Spirit all the time. But also there has to be a, a walking. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. um, like I went up to the gym the other morning and I work out. I hadn't eaten anything but a, but a, but a cliff bar and had a cup of coffee. About halfway through the workout, man, I was drinking. I was, what the world is wrong with me? And I realized I hadn't eaten anything. I said, like, this will never happen again. So when, you, you, when you're living by something, you walk out whatever you're living. If you live by that flesh, you'll walk by the flesh. If you live by the Spirit, then you'll, if you live by the Spirit, then you'll walk by the Spirit. Amen? That's what it means, right? All right. So we'll pick up next time at the Romans 8-4. That's how I was at Romans 8-4. Okay. Yes, you want that. righteous. Requirement of the law by the fulfillment of it. Oh. Do not walk according to the flesh, but oh. according to the spirit. Yeah. That was good. Because the actually says what Paul said just concluded. Yeah. Yeah. The righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Amen. Amen. Read that uh, read that footnote. I think we got time for that. <clears throat> You. Oh, okay. oh, oh. <laughs> Not consciously kept by us through our our endeavors, but spontaneous and unconsciously fulfilling in us by the inward working of the Spirit. Hold right that now. How does that work? How does that work? How does that work? The spirit speaks to our spirit, speaks to our mind, and we carry out the will of God. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? We talked about it a little bit Wednesday night. Not, right? not setting out to do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Action. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we used Jay as our little teaching to last night, last Wednesday night. When I first started, Jay, we walk on the street, I tell Jay, look both ways. He holds my hand. I said, look both ways. Look both ways. <coughs> it got to a point now that I went to current school that morning. Yeah. He got out of the car, because we carried him in a number of times. He got out of the car and said bye. He said, he told me bye. Yeah. And walked on to the school, went in school, went into the gym, and got with his group. He to go to class with. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is this, that once you begin to walk in the spirit, mm -hmm. it becomes unconscious to you yes. that you are trying to achieve anything in, in the flesh. You're, try, you're not even trying to achieve anything. You're just walking in the spirit. You don't look at me. You don't look at anybody. All you look to is the all-inclusive Christ, and you're walking in the spirit. That's unconscious. A guy that swings a bat, it all runs. There's a lot of practice to get to the point of where he can actually unconsciously, he see the ball coming, he can hit it. But we have to practice and practice and practice, even in doing, even doing what God wants us to do, in the spirit, we have to unconsciously walk in the spirit. And love is the prime reason that we walk in the spirit. Unconsciously. Respond. You're hearing God's voice, but you're not hearing God's voice. All you're doing is, is walking. All you're doing, over years you get to a point that where you're just walking. Even at our adult age, where you pull up to a stop sign, and you just ought to, hopefully, you just stop. I know you stop there, but I said, hopefully, you just stop. You see, a caution like you slow down. You don't speed, I know you don't hurt, you don't speed through the caution like that. You ain't great, son. But the norm of us, we have an understanding of what it means. So we don't, but if you pull up there and don't know what it means, or have never uh, uh, 
actually stop that is at cause of sign or be cautious when you go through. If it's you, you have problems with it. So we're saying that in walking in the spirit, you have some problems all the time walking in the spirit, but that will come a time when God is actually working in you unconsciously and you're not aware of it. You're just doing what the spirit does in your walking in, in, in the spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. You got to you look at a quiz. Puzzle look on your face. What is it? Not Everybody good? Amen. We'll pick up next time in August. Anything left, Harvey? Harvey. It's a bunch of fools. All right, go and read the fools. I think we can handle that. We can read the fools. The spirit of life is the spirit of Christ. Christ corresponds with the law of God. This spirit within us spontaneously fulfills all the righteous requirements of the law through us when we walk according to him. Or two. The Greek word relates to the general walk in our living. See note 16.1 in Galatians 5. The requirements that we must fulfill in order to